girl hey it's i'm lisha here i'm back with another video disclaimer before we start i only have on my first earring and my third i don't have on my middle one i took it out to clean it and i never got back to getting it second i don't have on any lashes so please don't judge me y'all please don't judge me um i could not find my lash glue and i wasn't about to keep looking for it use me as an example whatever you want to do with your life whether it's start a business write a book um start a new hobby whatever do it do it scared do it broke do it that way if you do it it'll get perfect along the way waiting on perfection or the perfect time will never happen you'll end up waiting your whole life and never doing it so just do it also if you tell yourself you're gonna do something do it i told myself today i'm gonna record this video so here i am lashes or not earring or not here i am <laughs> today we are chatting with a girl who i've been following for a couple years now um she's a mommy boss and a young entrepreneur who is killing the hair game so i but without further ado i'm gonna get jazzy b on the line and get her talking all right you guys so today we have jazzy b on and i'm super excited because i've been following her for a while if you guys don't know jasmine is from detroit and she's actually a mommy boss who started a couple years ago and she's grown to so much so jasmine how you feeling i'm feeling good and I'm good. Tell the people who you are. I'm Jasmine, also known as Jazzy B. I am a young entrepreneur. I've been um, in the hair game, business game, for about four years now this year. I started when I was 19 years old. Um, my main focus is my hairline and my hair salon. Um, I have more business ventures that's coming out this year that I'm excited about. But for right now, those are my definitely top two okay nice nice okay so i started following you on twitter years ago from a relationship goals i don't know maybe it was like a goals type of post and right. then to see you grow into this boss and this mogul that you are i'm like oh it's more to her than that like <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy how you watch people grow. evolve and grow like before it's just crazy to me um so Quickly within these four years, your business has gone on from just a hair, a hair you selling bundles to now you have a full shop. And how do you think that happened for you so fast? I wouldn't even say fast, but it happened for me swiftly because of the simple fact that I was consistent. I was like, I wasn't letting anyone know my moves. I was just moving. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really worried about getting denied getting told no i just went out and did what i had to do um stepped out on faith i knew what i wanted and i just went and got it period <laughs> period period so, you created a the barbie shop and that was three years after you had already been doing bundles right yes okay so and the barbie shop is hairstylists nail techs lash techs you really have like anybody who does a service in there. You have a platform for so many people who don't, might not, can't afford their own building. And the crazy thing is you don't do any of them. So it's like, was it hard for you to open something that you don't do? It wasn't hard for me only because um, I sell here. Okay. So that was my that was my hustle inside of the shop. I sell here, I provide the hair. You guys do hair, you know, you guys do lashes. I promote you, you promote me type of thing. It's not, I'm your boss. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here, be in charge. It was <laughs> so, like, you know, you're your independent contractor. I'm my independent contractor. We're going to come together. We're going to hustle. We're going to make some money. And we're going to all have everyone leaving out as a Barbie. So how did you come up with the name? Um, It actually took me um a little minute to come up with the name. I was really, like, contemplating. I'm like, I really want to sell bundles. I really want to do this. I just need a name like that's just my you know main part that was so hard for me opening a business and I sat in the room and I'm like well I'm always being called a Barbie doll okay. or referred as a Barbie so I'm like you know what let me do my Barbie extension let me do something that's not that I don't really hear too much of mm -hmm. but let me throw it in there and then I took that and was like okay you know I'm opening up a shop the Barbie shop you know I don't have to limit it to my Barbie extension because it's not just what's being inside of this place mm -hmm. I want it you know 
service everyone. Yes. And the bar, y'all, the Barbie shop, when I tell you it's like pink walls, it's white, it's pink mirrors, it's white fluffy chairs, like you created the Barbie dream house in a shop. Right. And your branding is, it's still a Barbie. So yeah. what is a Barbie to you? A Barbie can be any lady to me. Um, a Barbie can be um, anyone who loves to make their self beautiful. You mm -hmm. like to be dialed up. You like to have your hair done, your makeup done, your lashes, your nails. You like to dress pretty. Like You just keep yourself up and you are a Barbie. Okay. So let's let's take it back. Because you've, you've been in the hair game for a minute now. So let's take it back. Um, you were a nurse. You went to nurse school. And you were on track for that. How in the world did you go from, I'm going to be a nurse, to I'm about to slang bundles? How did that happen? Well, honestly, I, um, I was going to Oakland University. I was studying to be a nurse. I had my head on straight from being a nurse since high school. And um, I actually started back falling off academically because I'm not used to being broke. Like, the, the usually the term in college is being the broke mm -hmm. person, no broke friend or whatever when you go to college. And I mean, person that never says that set right with me since I was a kid. I always liked it to have my mm -hmm. own. So by me wanting to work at, I was working at Bucharest, which is actual, you know, a takeout restaurant yeah. choice. I was working at Bucharest Grill and I was trying to maintain both. And okay. it wasn't, you know, it wasn't flowing like that. So <laughs> okay. My academics fell behind and they actually told me I had to leave college okay. uh, for a year. It was like, just come back when, you, when your head is on straight. And me personally, I never got my head on straight. Okay. I got into my own bag and became my own bone. So many people, many people when they start, one of their problems is they don't, they say they don't have the support and they don't have the people around them and their family don't get it. I know starting a business, when people first hear it, they don't see your vision like you. So how was it for you when you tell people like, I'm going to sell hair? Was it a shock or was it just? Okay. It actually wasn't a shock. I had like my, my circle was so happy. You know, everybody was thinking, okay, we about to be bundled up. Here. <laughs> I was never, we about to get our bundles. Here. You know, but actually when you start actually stepping out on faith and you actually become your own boss, become mm -hmm. your entrepreneur, a lot of people struggling with, oh, you don't support me, you're not my friend, or you don't support me, you're mm -hmm. not my family. And they be having grudges against, you know, people around them because they don't support them. But you have to look at it that I feel like the best support comes from strangers. Okay. You know, people that promote your things the most, people that's going to come to your events, people that's going to shop with you the most, it's going to be strangers. Yeah. And that's just the absolute truth. And you can't get mad at that. You can't get mad at who support you. And don't force people to support you. Let the support come naturally. So, for you, what is the top three ways you get support? I feel like my best support is, uh, of course, shopping with me. Shopping with me, coming to my shop. Um, getting serviced. I feel like the second way of my support is posting me, you know, posting when I got a sale, posting any service that's there. And then my third support is like coming out to my events, coming out to my pop-up shops, you know, coming, just, even if you just show your face, it don't have to be monetary, just show your face and be present. Y'all hear that? Support is not just by people purchasing your products. So many people think like, oh, she didn't buy my stuff, so she doesn't like me. Like, no, maybe I just don't like the product maybe i just don't care for lashes maybe i just don't care to have bundles like i can support you by so many other ways that so i feel like looking on instagram everybody sell who everybody who sells here seems to be successful seems to be having these cars and these bread and these shoes and these whips and all of this um so what advice do you have for people who think selling hair is easy and think they want to just get into it uh my advice is stay consistent you can't look at everyone who got the bags and the purses and the shoes and the cars and all of that because at the end of the day, you don't know how they got it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you have some people that self-made. You got some people who's investing in themselves only. We don't have, you know, other people investing in us or, mm -hmm. you know, different things like that. So you can't, you can't pace yourself based on people around you. Pace yourself on you. You know, you know, materialistic things are going to be there. Right. Make sure you handle your business. Handle your business. We all in the house. Handle your business. Hey, please. Um, okay, so in five years, where do you see my Barbie extensions and the Barbie shop going? In five years, I want to be in multiple states. I want to be, um, you know, places that I am. Maybe people think like automatically like Atlanta and stuff like that. No, yeah. Atlanta is full of businesses. <laughs> I want to be places that, you know, 
like Tennessee, yeah. like country places where they're not used to Barbie things. Yeah. They're not used to lace fronts and, you know, different things like that. So I want to expand my business in different places and I want to see it grow. And like I said, I want to expand and do different business ventures as well. And like this video. Subscribe and leave a comment. Okay, back to the video. That is good. Okay. Um, so you're from Detroit. I'm from New York, but I went to my last two years of high school here and then I left and came back, whatever. How do you think Detroit has made you the hustler that you are? Detroit is just one hustler. <laughs> Period. There's no other way to put it. Everybody Mainly everybody is just, it's, it's just hustle. You get mm -hmm. it how you live. You know what I'm saying? You eat or you starve. So yeah. it's like, you, your, your city, this city, it just pushes you to do everything you can do. Okay. Okay. Well, you guys, she's only 22. And she's been in this game for four years. But last year you had a baby. Mm -hmm. Baby Jace, who is so adorable. Oh, my gosh. He, I be like, oh, look at him. <laughs> um, how has being a mom changed your life? Being a mom changed my life completely. It changed how I see things. It changed how I want to get it. He definitely, some people say baby slow you down. My baby actually pushed my business to the utmost part. He made me want to go twice as hard because now I have somebody that's dependent on me. So mm -hmm. I have to do everything that I have to do. So it's like he's a blessing. He's a big blessing. Yes, yes. Well, yesterday I asked you guys to send me questions and you guys did. So I'm going to ask her your questions now. Somebody said, uh, well, a lot of people actually said, what is one thing you wish you knew before a mom, before becoming a mom and a business owner? Um, one thing I wish I knew. Um, I wouldn't say it's anything I wish I would have known before I became a mom because it's not really a handbook to becoming a mom. You just naturally, you know, grab hold of, your baby i just feel like that motherly instinct kick in um immediately as far as business i um kind of feel the same exact way but as far as business i just wish certain things um wish certain things as far as like hiring people and different things like that i just wish that i would have looked more in depth into that or um did my research more and you know as far as that but i don't really regret anything or anything like that um somebody said negative comments are always getting to me how do you deal with them um me personally <laughs> this is what everyone got to know <laughs> about me i don't let anything get to me really um i'm not the type of person no shade to people that do but i'm not the type of person that like goes to the internet with mm -hmm. me like you probably never ever see me arguing on the internet really or doing all different types of things because when you are headed to bigger places, you can't let smaller things get to you. Period. That's a word. That is a word for us, ladies and gentlemen. Run that back. Whatever you got to do, rewind that because that is a word. I feel like so many people you see, they got so many followers and their business is doing so well and they arguing with clients. And I'm just like... You can't let them bring you down. You can't let them... My biggest thing when I hire people in my salon, I tell them, we are. you are a brand. You are your own brand. And don't ever let anyone tarnish your brand. At the end of the day, it's not going to hurt you to walk away and be like, have a blessed day. You don't have to argue with a client. You don't. Simple as that. Um, somebody said, I'm a mommy boutique owner and I struggle with wanting to always post my family, i.e. boyfriend and baby. How do I not overshare? Um, I feel like it's not a such thing to overshare. If that's what makes you happy and that's what you want to post, post it. I mean, if they don't like it, if the button is right on your phone, they say follow, they can click that. Yeah, I feel like people will buy your story. People always buy the person. So if they see, okay, she posting the baby, she posting this, they want to see that. Yeah, it makes you relatable. It makes you really relatable. Somebody said, do you think the hair world is too saturated? I want to start selling bundles, but I think I missed my shot. You can't think like that. You know, it's been people before me. You have Ming Lee, you have Kendra, you have so many people that's been selling her before me. If I would have thought, oh my God, they sell her, I can't sell her, or everybody go to them. You're going to have those certain customers that's going to come to you. You market how you're supposed to market, you put yourself out there, you brand, you're going to have your people. Yes, ma'am. Somebody said, how do you balance being a mommy and an entrepreneur? Any tips? It's not really a handbook. You just have to... <laughs> 
stay consistent. Stay on top of it. You can. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to be like blaming everything on your baby. Like I can't get nothing done because I have my baby. You have to organize and set things apart. Just like if I had this video call, I can't say oh, I can't do this video call because I have a baby. It's you know you have to set things apart and organize your life so where you still have you. You still have to be your own person with the baby. You got you with you before the baby. You got to be you after the baby. Period. That leads into the next question. Somebody said, "Do you want any more kids? Your baby is so cute." Yes, I honestly want three boys total. Five <laughs> to boys. No boys. girls. No, no Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> no Barbies. You're like, no, I'm the only Barbie in this house. <laughs> so three boys. Oh my gosh. gosh. What is the hardest part about being a mommy and an entrepreneur? Um. You're not having as much free time as you used to when you don't have a baby. You know, you don't have time to just up and go or, oh, let me go do this, let me go do that. So you have to, like I said, organize and prioritize things that best fit you. Um, somebody said, do you think I should be able to add my faith into my business? I feel like I'm scared what my following might say. Add your faith? Her faith. Your faith should already be in your <laughs> when you started, baby. That's number one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like you know overly yeah. church or whatever but I do have a relationship with God and I put him in everything that I do I feel like any step that you make in your life whether that's business or person you should run it by God first because it's it's not through him it's not gonna last and if you're scared about sharing it with your following that's not your following I mean like she said earlier it's nothing to just hit on follow if you don't like what I post. Like, you're not forced to follow people be, people kill me with following people and they be like I hate what she do I'll follow it. Like, I'll follow it. <laughs> and you won't see it no more, I bet you. I promise it'll be out your timeline. You ain't got to see nothing that she doing. Uh, somebody wanted to know, are you still with your baby's father? I love y'all on Twitter, and I think you guys make it such a cute family. Ooh, shall we? <laughs> um, I would say that we're like, I don't know. <laughs> like, he's here right now. <laughs> he quarantined in the house. Yeah, quarantine. So, um, we're working back on us. After a baby, it, it honestly changes your relationship because that's a new thing, and you're both learning how to be parents. So, we're working through. We're pushing through. I mean, y'all been together since yeah, <laughs> fifth, fourth grade. I'm like, at this point, who else you gonna be with? Who else are you gonna be with? <laughs> that was all y'all questions that y'all asked me. I'm gonna ask you some quick rapid fire. I'm gonna let you go. I know you gotta go get back to Chase. Um, this or that, coffee or tea? Neither. <laughs> so what do you drink? Water, juice, I hate coffee and I hate tea. Oh my god, morning or night? Night. Okay, R&B or hip hop? Hip hop. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. <laughs> Light liquor or dark? It depends on the night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a light liquor though. Light liquor. So you like tequila or you more like vodka? I'm more like a tequila. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wealth or do you want the love? <laughs> Wealth. Give me money. <laughs> Everybody's like, I just want to say wealth, but am I wrong if I say wealth? I'm like, no, if you want it. I mean, so <laughs> well, do you have any final words for the people? Um, I do want to let everyone know to be encouraged during this quarantine. Um, a lot of businesses are um, being kind of rocky. Yeah. I actually, if anyone is watching that has a business, um, if you're a black owned business, well, any business, a small business, Send over your information to my DM. I would love to support every small business if I can um, be a help. That's about it. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate it. I loved watching you grow from this little girl in love to now you're a grown mommy boss who wants three boys and a big house. <laughs> you're thank you. You're welcome. I, I enjoyed talking to you. I would love to talk to you again. Anytime. Of course. When this open up, I'm going to go sit inside the barbie shop because I need to just sit inside the house because pictures don't do it justice. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good one. You too.